Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. There behind the glass stands a real blade of grass. Be careful as you pass. Move along, move along. Come inside, the show's about to start. Guaranteed to blow your head apart. I think anybody with half a brain can see that this market rally is all about the Fed and QE. If you look at a chart of the Fed's balance sheet, which I've already posted on my Twitter page, you can check it there, you can see that the bottom in March correlates directly with the point at which the Fed started wrapping up its balance sheet to the point where it's now at $6.7 trillion with a T. And that's a faster increase than we saw back in 2008, 2009. So you really have to understand this force, and it is definitely an irresistible sort of force that is very persistent but it does have its signatures in the market and I think you see it in certain stocks so for example if we look at Apple you can see that the rally off the lows here on this weekly chart here it's a v-shape so it's this flying V that I talk about and I just call it a flying V more as a joke because I like the flying V guitar the Gibson guitar the flying V some of you might be familiar with that which is the only guitar I don't have in my collection anyways I've been looking around for a an older model so if anybody knows of, of one I might be interested in acquiring it because it is a hard asset anyways one thing you'll notice here though is that the rally there's no volume on this rally in Apple off the lows you get I mean you get some volume off the lows that makes sense okay but it's just drifting higher and no volume and if you look at the daily chart the daily patterns are very weird now this past week we saw this pattern in the general market and in the indexes where you'd have a gap up opening and then it'd edge higher edge higher all day long and then finally in the last hour or so all of a sudden they'd break down and that looked very bearish right but I begin to wonder whether this is manufactured by algos or whoever is controlling this market because some something some force is in control I don't see it as a traditional institutional accumulation where mutual funds are coming in and buying stocks because they're suddenly getting money flows because it's pretty clear to me when it comes to Apple somebody was blowing this thing out here on heavy volume and in, in order to push it back higher nobody really had to be buying but nobody was selling and that may be where you're at right now so there's no sellers uh, and that's what's driving things higher even though there aren't really any heavy buyers in a lot of cases so Apple's one great example of that but if you look at the pattern here let's look at this um, off the lows so let me blow it up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better and this is what's been going on off the lows so here's the bottom okay that coincides with the market bottom you gap up you run up and you get some light volume in here it looks like it's consolidating constructively as the volume dries up right and then it tries to break out here and reverses and breaks to a lower low the volume picks up slightly off the highs on the reversal and that looks bearish but it finds its feet gaps up again in fact if you look at it here you know, I'm looking at this, and this looks like a little bare flag, and that may lead to a move lower, but it doesn't. Instead, you get a gap up move. And you've seen a lot of days in a lot of stock patterns where they look ugly one day, and then the next day they gap up. So it's almost like it forces you out. It would force sellers out, and uh, the next morning you're gapping right up. And you see that here. So Apple doesn't look too bearish here, but then it gaps up here, and it runs up, and you get a about an equal volume reversal here that looks a little bit bearish and then no volume as it drifts higher and then volume picks up and it gaps higher but that doesn't lead to further upside instead what you do is you roll over and your volumes picking up down at the bottom and you're through the 20-day exponential moving average so that's looking bearish but what happens it gaps up the next day and on light volume so that looks suspect and the next day you reverse here on a slight pickup in volume which could be slightly bearish but instead what it does is it turns right around and just starts trucking higher on light volume until the day after they report earnings and you get this massive reversal on uh, heavy volume I'm not going to say massive reversal but it's a pretty decent reversal it looks bearish right because it's on very heavy volume and the heaviest volume day since just a few days after the bottom so that looks bearish it looks like it could roll over and let's face it Apple's earnings aren't that great um, they're not selling that many phones and you could argue that the valuation is way up there for a stock that's growing earnings at say 10 percent or whatever on an annual basis but instead you just truck higher on light volume so there's no sellers and not that many buyers but on balance there are more buyers and sellers so boom you get a rally let's look at uh, let's just pick another one out let's look at Nvidia which I already got up here similar situation because what you see here is a nice big volume move here 
and the next day it reverses on heavy volume but that's not a problem it just continues higher as the volume declines and then at the highs here it reverses off the peak on heavy volume that looks bearish and the next day you're thinking yeah that was bearish but as we come down <clears throat> Uh, and this is slightly above average volume. Next day, we're, we try to rally, and you bounce up, and then you roll over again. You're below the 20-day exponential moving average again. Volume is above average again. That looks bearish. But then, boom, it gaps up. It clears to a new high, but it reverses on heavy volume. So if I clean this up, that's the heavy volume reversal. And it comes up, but it holds the 50-day line. Volume dries up. And that presented a low-risk entry point if you're watching for that. And then that worked. But there's no real volume until you get to the peak here and then you start to see some volume and that's a five-day pocket pivot that's why it's colored blue but you roll over and the volume's picking up here and that looks bearish but no it just gaps up the next day and we're back to higher highs but then that rolls over and finds support at the 20-day moving average and from there we're trucking higher on lighter volume so you know and these are stocks Nvidia is one I've liked to play it's a, a great trader because you can see this is this uh, concept I talk about where you're not you don't have uptrends but you have upwinds w e n d which is a pattern that just sort of wends its way higher and it tries to fool you because it just does this you know it's not really going up and then basing and stair stepping higher it's just kind of wending its way higher you know uh and so that will that that's not really a typical pattern that you might see in a very bullish situation. So to me, it just tells tells you that you have money flying out and then flying back in, and you wonder if the money coming out or the the push to the downside on heavier volume isn't a big shakeout, and somebody's in there just jacking it the other way the next day, and they try to get uh, money out of whatever normal money, in other words, non-algo money that's in it. Maybe they're trying to push it out. Now a lot of this is speculation, and I'll, I'll admit that. But you know, you see these patterns and the way things act, and it's not as it used to be you know you also look over here on the uh, the weekly chart okay we get nice volume off the lows but you've been moving higher in a very v-shaped pattern a flying v on light volume and that doesn't look all that bullish to me but that said it could continue higher simply because of all the qe out there and the fact that nobody's really selling at this point unless you give them a reason and i would think the reason would have to be some sort of forced selling because there's a liquidity issue somewhere in the system because that's what happened back in march they took out the market and everything came down very very sharply because there was a massive liquidity shortage in the system somewhere and all these big institutions banks and whatnot had to unload stocks to raise liquidity and the algos piled onto that adding to the selling that's my theory okay let's look at one last stock and that would be an end phase oh, let me get that symbol right and this is another one i'd like to play but the thing is again you have to come after this when it's weak now notice here you get the move off the lows looks pretty good heavy volume here stalls at the 50-day line and then stalls again the next day so that looks shortable and in fact it is it comes in it comes down to the 200-day line but what do you notice basically you have one low here and then you roll back and you're testing the, the second or the, the retest of the low so the second low is higher than the first low and the volumes drying up as it comes into the 200-day line that's a Wyckoffian retest or that's what I call it Remember, I use Wyckoff's methods more as adaptations. Not, I'm not a strict Wyckoff system user. I'm not really a quant type person. I know there were some guys who jumped on my Twitter page thinking they were going to sell everybody on the Wyckoff Institute of Brilliance or whatever it is. But to me, they're just high-priced baloney. You can find out about Wyckoff and learn about his methods and then decide how you want to implement them given your own psychology and your own preferences. Um, rather than somebody telling you exactly how to do it using their thousand dollar system or whatever you have to pay to get it. But anyways, look at how this works. So you can see here, there's a contrarian uh, entry there, low volume, and that's an owl entry. That's a white copy and pull back to the 200-day line. Boom, you head up to the 50-day line. There's still no volume in this thing, and it bounces around. It's looking like it's shortable along the 50-day line. And then you roll over here on heavy volume. You see that? And that looks bearish. Then you rally up to the 50-day Again, the volume's light and you're stalling even as it picks up a little bit on this second day up. And then you see volume pick up as it rolls over and it closes right about at the 20-day line, maybe slightly below. And what happens? That looks bearish. And the next day we just gap higher. Now, remember what I was talking about? It was uh, in a video report about a couple of weeks ago. And I talked about this stock that I would watch this because it looked like it wanted to move higher. And my theory is that more awareness regarding... Uh, 
solar energy and the use of solar energy to get off the grid in, in case we have a financial crisis and COVID-19 shuts down all the uh, utilities, you know, the electrical generation plants and whatnot. Uh, these may come into play. The other one was Solar Edge, and but you see here, you get two big days up, and it was added to this S and P 400, so that's what helped to drive it. But then what happens here? You're thinking, okay, it's been added to the S and P 400. Everybody piled in on this day to get their uh, allocation or their weighting in the S and P 400, and it comes in hard for two days, but it stops at the 10-day line and holds. And you could have bought it, but then you would have had to sit through earnings, which have turned out to be very nice, and you're up for three days <clears throat> after earnings, and now you're back at the top of this V-shaped or flying V formation. So there it is again. So, you know, this this has to be bought on weakness, and that's really what you have to lay for. So, you know, in the midweek, I thought we were going to come in a little bit based on what I saw on Wednesday, but we didn't. We just gapped higher the next morning and then gapped higher again on, on Friday. And I'm looking for pullbacks because that's where I want to be buying. I don't want to be chasing this strength. So let's look at one last one, which is related to end phase. And another stock that I've liked, and you'll see here that you had to be opportunistic is all get out on this one. Very similar move. It moved with the end phase, even though it wasn't getting added to the S&P 400. And then you pull into the 20-day uh, line, 50-day line on light volume. So that's a nice uh, test for supply, and then boom, you're out of there again. And that then they reported earnings after this day, so it was Wednesday afternoon, and they gapped down. But this is where you have to be opportunistic with just about any stock you're looking to buy because they tend to show these funky patterns where they go from you know strength to weakness to strength to weakness and strength to weakness strength to weakness and now coming out again but if you were alert to this then you could have bought it right here at the 20-day line on thursday and that was good for a trade and that's the sort of thing you're looking for so you know i I don't understand why people who are paying attention would get all excited about a big volume breakout or upside strength and want to buy into that, you know, when in fact what you need to do, and of course there's no fear in doing that, right, because everybody's been trained psychologically to want to do that. You see big strength, you get excited, FOMO kicks in and everybody's got to jump in and then they slam the thing to the downside or it rolls over. And then when it comes in, nobody wants to buy it because your psychology isn't oriented towards buying heavy volume to the downside but in an owl world if you see support off of there on the 620 down big on volume which is a principle I've been talking about for months if not years at this point in this market is a buy signal so there you go so if you know that and you understand that from looking at all these examples and you can go go through all my lists that I posted all my group lists that I posted on the website and go through all those charts and you'll see how this works and you'll start to understand that when you see these pullbacks, you probably should be more comfortable buying than you would be buying on upside strength. Even though you're trained, your mind has been trained, I might even say brainwashed, into believing that up big on volume means you jump in and it's going to go a lot higher. Because that's not the case. There are some exceptions, yes. But for the most part, that is not the case. And to me, this is the signature of algos at work. And this is how you trade the trader and trade against the algos. Now, I, I recognize that this is subject to debate because I don't know anything for certain, but I know this for certain, and that is that the methods I use now, which are contrarian and uh, dev devised in the spirit of trading against algos or trading with the algos, really, uh, they work. So that's all the proof I need.